In this video, I'm going to discuss solving literal equations. Now, a literal equation is going to be any equation that has more than one variable. To this point, every equation that we've solved has all had only one variable. It's had the variable that we're searching for. So we isolate that variable, and uh, typically it's x, and we always get like x equals 4, or x equals negative 7 twelfths, or something like that. But it equals a number. So now we're going to turn things up a notch, and we're going to say, now our equations have more than one variable, but we're going to solve for a specific variable, so we're going to get that all by itself. In this first example, we have the formula for perimeter. Perimeter equals 4 times the length of a side, and this is the perimeter of a square. But instead of solving for P, which is the perimeter, we're going to solve for S. So here is S right there, and we want to get that guy all by himself. So like we've been doing, we can use the properties of equality in order to isolate a particular variable. So, this 4 is being multiplied by that s right now, and there are no other terms on this side. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and that gets rid of that 4 that's with the s. So really, on the right side I just have s, and on the left side I have p over 4. I can also use my symmetric property of equality, and I could exchange it and say s equals p over 4, and that would be my answer for the first example. We know we have the answer that we're looking for because it tells us what variable to solve for. And once that variable is isolated and everything else is on the other side, then we know we're finished. So that's the solution for the first example. In our second example, we have another formula. And this one's a good simple interest formula, I equals PRT. And this is our simple interest. So interest equals principal times rate times time. Perhaps you've seen that before. But in this case, instead of solving for i right here, we're looking for p. So we want to get p all by itself, and we want to isolate that variable. So here's my p right there, and there are no other terms over here. There's no plus or minus, so we just have this big prt, and it's all being multiplied together. So in order to get my p by itself, right now it's being multiplied by r and t. So I'm going to divide both sides by rt. And what that will do is the r here and here will cancel. The t here and here will cancel, and now all we have left on the right side is this p. So I can put that p on the right side and say i divided by rt, and that's going to be my solution for this one. And then, as we've been doing, I can use the symmetric property of equality and flip those two around, and I can actually say p equals i divided by rt, and that'll be my solution for the second example. In this next example, I have the formula for a perimeter of a rectangle, so P equals 2L plus 2W, and this time I'm going to solve for W. So my W is here, and it's in this term right here. So the goal now that I have more than just one term on the left and one term on the right, like I saw in those previous examples, I now have two terms over here on the right. I have a 2L and a 2W. So the first thing I need to do is get this 2W all by itself. So to do that, I need to subtract 2L from both sides, which is going to be my subtraction property of equality. And that's nice because that'll cancel that business out from the right side, and now my right is just the 2W. So my left, I have P minus 2L. These are not like terms because they have different variables, so I need to write them separately, P minus 2L, just like that. Okay, so in order to complete this and get the W all by itself, I gotta get rid of that 2 right there, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and the 2's here go away. So I have just my W on my right side, and that's my aim. And on my left side, I have P minus 2L all over 2. And then, as we've been doing, I can use the symmetric property of equality and say W equals P minus 2L all over 2. And that'll be my solution, solving for W for the third example. In this next example, I have x plus 5y equals 15, and I think I'm going to go ahead and solve for y in this case. So I need to get this 5y term all by itself, and I notice there's another term on that side with it. I have this x term. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides in order to get rid of that from the left. And now I just have the 5y, which is good. And on my right side, 15 and a negative x, these are not like terms, so I can't put them together, so I just have to write them separately, 15 minus x. Okay, now in order to get this y all by itself, I can divide both sides by 5, because that was the coefficient here. 
So both of those fives will cancel from the left. And I get y equals 15 minus x all over 5. And then that's my answer for that one. y equals the quantity 15 minus x all over 5. In the next example, I have x equals the quantity a plus b all over 2. And I want to solve for b. So right now my b is kind of trapped in this whole fraction business. So in order to, to liberate it, so to speak, I need to get rid of this 2 in the denominator. So I can multiply both sides by 2. And on the right side, my 2's will cancel. And on the left side now I have 2x, and that equals now on the right side a plus b. And there's no longer this denominator or this 2 anymore. It's just a plus b. So now to finish solving for my b, I need to get rid of that a. So I'm going to subtract a from both sides, and those cancel out. So on my right side, I just have b. On my left side, the x and the a are not like terms, so I can't put them together. So I'm just going to say 2x minus a, and that equals my b. And then our symmetric property, I'll say b equals 2x minus a, just so I can get the variable that I'm solving for, that b, all by itself on the left side, because we like to see it that way. So the solution is b equals 2x minus a. In this example, I have d equals the quantity c minus m all over 2. I'm going to solve for m, so I'm solving for this guy. So this is pretty similar to our previous problem, where we're going to multiply by 2 to start things off, and that'll get rid of that fraction over there. So I have 2d equals c minus m. The only difference that you have in this problem, which you're going to see really quick, is this is c minus m. And I think the last problem I had this as a plus sign, but now this is a minus sign. So I've got to get rid of this c from the right side, so I'm going to subtract c from both sides. Those cancel. And I have 2d minus c equals a negative m. Because the negative here is minus with a c minus m, this negative needs to stay with the m. So our m is negative. So we haven't quite finished. I mean, the m is almost by itself, but we have that negative with it. So I need to divide both sides by a negative 1. On the right side, you'll see those negatives are going to cancel. I'm left with just my m now. But what does that do to the left side whenever I divide it by negative 1? Well, you can liken this unto the distributive property when you distribute a negative through an, an expression. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. I'm going to take this, negative 1, I'm going to turn him positive, and then change the sign of everything on top. So now I have a negative 2d plus c, or since we like to lead with a positive, I'm going to say c minus 2d. And if, you, if you're not comfortable changing the order around, you can still say negative 2d plus c equals m. And then you can either leave it that way, I mean I circled that already, or you can say m equals c minus 2d, and you can use that as your final solution if you like. So that's uh, the solution to that example. In this example, we see that we have quite a longer equation here where we have 3 times the quantity, 2x plus y, and that's going to equal 5y plus 3. So we're going to solve for x, and right now our x is right inside this parentheses. So in order to get rid of the parentheses and again kind of liberate our x so we can solve for him, we need to go ahead and use the distributive property. So this 3 will come to both of these things. So 3 times 2 will be 6x and then 3y equals 5y plus 3. Okay, so I'm, since I'm solving for x here, I need to get this term by itself because it's the only term with an x. So since that's the case, I need to subtract 3y from both sides. And here it'll cancel out. Over here, I finally have some like terms, don't I? 5y and a negative 3y. So 5 minus 3 will be 2y, and that plus 3 comes along for the ride. And that 6x equals that business. So I've almost solved for my x. Right now I've got this 6 being multiplied. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So now I've got x all by itself equals 2y plus 3, and that's all over 6. So that will be my solution for that example. And like that previous example, this one has a couple of extra things going on. We've got lots of stuff. We're going to solve for y. So this y is actually in the denominator down here, which is really goofy, but it's still in this term. So since it's in this term, I need to get all other terms to the other side. So I'm going to say plus 5x on both sides. And that's nice because when I do that, I see that I have some like terms over on the right side that I can deal with. 
So right now I have 3 divided by y equals 7, and then I have this plus 2x. Okay, so this is kind of the tricky part, and uh, I'm going to show you the long way about doing this, and then I'll do another example with kind of a trick, a little short way to do it. So anytime you're solving and your variable is down here in the denominator, you kind of have to use the property of equality here and multiply both sides by the y. So over here it cancels, but over here it's now in the numerator. So I have 3 equals 7 plus 2x and then times y. Now be careful, don't use the distributive property. Don't go ahead and multiply that through. Since we're solving for y, I'm just going to divide both sides by 7 plus 2x and over on the right those will cancel out and now my y is all by itself which is the goal and my left side is 3 and then all over 7 plus 2x or I could change it and say y equals 3 over 7 plus 2x and that'll be my solution for that problem but I'm going to show you a kind of a trick here is Anytime you have your variable in the denominator down here, so I'm going to rewrite this part. I'll put a line down here and rewrite this step. So I had 3 over y equals 7 plus 2x. I want to get my y solved for, right? He needs to be in the numerator and he needs to be by himself. So if he's down here, what I can do is take him and take everything on this other side and I can just switch them. And you'll notice, essentially, that's what we did when we worked it out, but we had to use two properties of equality. First we multiplied, then we divided. But here we can just switch them. So now I have 3 over my 7 plus 2x equals my y, which you'll notice, ding to ding is the same thing I had up here for this answer. So it's totally fine to do that. Take the whole denominator here and the whole numerator over here and just switch them. And uh, I'll do another example where you can take a look at this. So here we are with another example. And the variable h that we're solving for is down here in the denominator. So you can go about your business. You can multiply everything by h. And then you'll end up dividing everything by 4 plus j. Or you can just take this h, which is down here, and this 4 plus j, which is over here. And you can just swap them, which is totally fine to do. So you have g plus 3 on the top. You have 4 plus j now on the bottom, and that equals my h. So this will be my answer, which you can rewrite it if you want. You can say h equals g plus 3 all over that 4 plus j, and that would be a fine answer too. So again, this will work very nicely, but it will only work if you take the whole denominator and switch it with the whole numerator up here. Okay, so that's how to do that. Here's one final example for us. This is the formula for the volume of a, what, a cone, I guess. So the volume equals one-third pi r squared h. And we're going to solve this guy for h. And the reason I want to do this problem is because we have a fraction here that we need to get rid of. So as we were doing with our one-step, two-step, you know, multi-step equations, any time we ended up with a fraction and we needed to get rid of that fraction, we ended up multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of that fraction. So let's start by doing that and getting rid of this one-third. So the reciprocal of one-third is three, so I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So the three here and three here will cancel, which is really nice. So I'll have three v equals pi r squared h. And now it looks like one of those easy problems we had at the beginning of this lesson, where I can divide both sides by pi r squared, and that will get the h all by itself. So the pi's cancel over here and the r squared's cancel. And I'm left with h equals 3v over pi r squared. So this would be the way to find the height if you were given the volume and the radius. So the height would equal 3 times the volume divided by pi r squared. And that's how to do that one.